nachos and sushi and whatever the heck you've asked for and... Hey Internet, Dan Corrigan here to talk to you about all things bass. So today, I'm going to go through one of the most important things that they don't teach you at music school, one of the very practical things you got to know to be a good bass player, and that is how to pack for a gig. So let's take a look at what I got sitting in this gig bag. Okay, so let's talk first about some of the specifically music related items you're going to keep on you. So first up, we got a tuner. This goes without saying, you should strive to be in tune. We tune because we care. The reason I keep one of these around is uh, even though, you know, we all have tuners on our pedal boards and all that, it's really important to keep a separate tuner on you that you can just clip on any time. These clip-on tuners, you just clip them onto your instrument. It doesn't have to be plugged in. It doesn't have to be loud. It just goes off the vibrations of the instrument. This means that, you know, let's say you're backstage, you don't have access to your pedal board. You can still tune. It also means that, you know, if someone in your band, you know, forgot their tuner, you can lend this out to them. They can clip it onto any instrument. And if you're playing an acoustic instrument, like uh, like an upright bass, if you're just being mic'd on stage, you're not going through your pedal board, you can clip this guy on and check your tuning on the fly. The next important thing to have is a multi-tool like this guy. It's something that you can clip strings, you know, you can pull the pegs out on the acoustic guitar, you can wind strings. It suggests keeping, uh, you know, a small screwdriver on here or a couple Allen keys to adjust your bridge. It's just very useful stuff to be able to keep up with maintenance on the road, you know. If you have to change a string before a show, you know, you have to tweak your action a bit. It's gotten a little out of hand, you know, due to weather changes or whatever. Yeah, keep some tools on you. Next one is a pack of strings. Now I don't have any uh, bass strings on me, surprisingly. I do have to stock up on those and I usually do, but I always keep a pack of guitar strings on me. The reason for that, to this day, knock wood, I have never broken a bass string on a gig, but it's happened countless times when a guitar player has. So keeping a set of strings around, you know, your buddy breaks a string, you're gonna be the most clutch guy in the room if you got one of these. So the uh, first part of this is keeping some multicolored electrical tape around. Uh, the reason I keep this, you know, sometimes cable, you know, breaks or you got an exposed wire or something. I mean, obviously re replace broken cables, that goes without saying, but hey, sometimes it happens on the fly, you're in a pinch, you can wrap it up with one of these guys. Uh, also, you can use uh, tape to strike the stage. You want to remember where you placed your mic stand or your bass amp and they're moving around a lot between sets or whatever. You can mark it with this. Usually that's a sound guy's job, but you no, know, it just helps to have your own. You can also color code stuff. So let's say, you know, all of my stuff is marked with green, you know, that way we don't mix up microphones and stands or whatnot. That could be really useful too. I also keep some uh, just generic painter's tape around. This stuff's really useful if you got to label anything, you know, tape a set list to the wall or anything like that. You can also uh, write notes on it and put them on things, uh, save pedal settings that way. As far as what to write with, uh, I always keep a Sharpie and a pencil on me. Uh, the Sharpie is useful because you can, you know, write big bold letters that you can see on a dark stage. Like let's say you have to write a set list or whatever. Write uh, really big legible lettering that can be read on stage. You know, usually you're throwing stuff on the floor you gotta read or reading from a distance in low light. This is super useful. Also for like musical theater, classical gigs, stuff like that, having a pencil on you is really useful. Oftentimes we'll be playing off of sheet music and you can't mark that stuff up with a pen. It has to be erasable, especially, you know, especially in classical music, oftentimes you're dealing with rented parts from libraries or whatever, they want it back in a condition that we can reuse it. And obviously having a good notebook around. This is mine from, uh, from university. It still has the uh, university logo on it. But yeah, just something that you can uh, write down like an emergency set list or, uh, or let's say a chord chart. Oftentimes you'll, you know, you'll get a request on a gig and one guy in the band's like, okay, I know this song, I'll write it down, we'll play it after break. You know, you can write down a quick chord chart on one of these with the aforementioned Sharpie. Also just any sorts of notes or whatever, you know, could be a song idea, lyric idea sticks in your head, just put it in a notebook. Okay, some of the other stuff I keep on me. You know, I always like to keep myself a nice little pair of uh, Sunglasses. Cheap sunglasses. Not only do these make you look cool as heck, they also serve a very practical purpose. Oftentimes, you know, sun's glaring your direction on stage, or, you know, maybe there's really bright stage lights you can't see. You gotta be able to read your set list. You gotta be able to see the crowd. Get yourself a pair of these. And for the opposite reason, you're also gonna always wanna keep on you a nice little flashlight like this. Oftentimes on stage, you know, it's really dark up there. 
Especially, it just seems to be all the places you need to see. Where you're plugging in your amp, where you're plugging in your pedals. Those places are always dark. How can you tell what you're doing? Well, get yourself a little flashlight, do do do, you can see what you're doing. You know? The next thing you're always gonna wanna keep on you a couple snacks. In, in a perfect world, you know, you've negotiated your food situation in your rider, you have a definite sound check time, a definite like downbeat time, you got designated dinner break. Yo, know, they're catering you, you know, nachos and sushi and whatever the heck you've asked for and parmesan no reggiano. But in the real world, there's gonna be plenty of times where you're not gonna have dinner until 2 a.m. at the Denny's in the middle of nowhere just outside of Kingston, Ontario. So the last thing you wanna do is get hangry at a gig. So getting a few quick snacks to kind of help tide you through can help save the day. Um, I keep on holding, it, holding up these Cliff bars. Uh, I'm not sponsored by Cliff. I don't know if Cliff sponsors musicians. I don't have any sponsorship deals actually, so that would be so funny if Cliff became my first sponsorship. Cliff, guys, if you're watching this, please, I'm just looking for some sponsors here. Come at me, I love your bars. Also going off the same theme, you're always gonna wanna keep a toothbrush on you. You know, you don't know where you're gonna end up at the end of the night, you know, whether it be a trashy hotel room, some dude's couch. I don't know, maybe once again, if you're smart negotiating your rider, maybe you got a decent place to stay. But having a toothbrush with you is super important. Musicians don't get medical insurance, so uh, take care of your dental hygiene. That being said, I didn't mention to keep toothpaste in your gig bag. And you probably noticed I haven't mentioned any liquids yet. So the reason for that is if you're like me and you end up doing any fly gigs, you know, you're gonna wanna keep your instrument case and your instrument, obviously, with you at all times. That's gonna wanna be your carry-on. You're gonna wanna keep a separate case that you can put through check baggage with all your liquids in it, whether it be toothpaste, bug spray, vodka, whatever you got in there, keep that in a separate case. That way that can go through check baggage. You can take your instrument on the plane, no worries. So this last item is kind of just a me sort of thing. It's this uh, Porlex coffee grinder. So anyone who knows me personally knows I'm a bit of a coffee snob. Uh, you know, I have taken an espresso machine to gigs. I am that guy and I'm damn proud of it. You know, oftentimes you're on the road, the coffee situation is often less than ideal, somewhat questionable, you know, so keeping a way to grind yourself a fresh cup of joe, super important. Specifically, I picked the Porlex Mini. Uh, James Hoffman has got a really good review of this. And with all things considered, for the size to durability to price uh, to quality ratio, that this thing produces, I gotta say, this is kind of the ideal thing to take on the road with you. You know, you could drop this out of a moving bus, pick it up, grind yourself a good cup of joe. Even goes fine enough for espresso. I'm just gonna show you a quick video of me doing that. So here we are, welcome to my home kitchen. We're gonna be trying out this little nifty hand grinder here. A uh, few upsides, super portable. Like you can fit this in your press press, fit in your, it's nice and easy in your pocket. One downside, um, a lot of modern hand grinders of this class have steel burrs. This one's got a, this one's got ceramic. I know, I know, but hey, it gets the job done. It gets the job done. So it's gonna be a little bit of, a little bit of an arm workout though. So let's load this thing up and try to pull some shots of my Gajotebe over here. Today we're using one of my favorite coffees, North Star Espresso from Equator Coffee Roasters in Almont. Shout out, not sponsored yet. C'est perfetto. That was French and Italian. Maybe so now we're all loaded up. Time to get cranking. Okay, there we're doing grinding. Give her a couple good taps there. That took about, I don't know, two or three centuries, it seemed. I don't know, probably, probably actually like five minutes or so. Um, so definitely not as quick as a electric grinder or literally most other hand grinders. Any espresso enthusiast will recognize this already. Got some uh, big old chonky boys in there. Gonna try to tap those out. Hey, it's a hundred bucks and it fits in your pocket. What more do you want from me? Camp that bad boy out. Time to pull a shot.
Give her, give her a little stir. Stir is important. Any James Hoffman fans out there would know that. Okay, not bad, not bad. Definitely not as good as uh, my nice Baratza set here over here. Lacking a little body, it got uh, a two to one ratio, so that's uh, 18 grams in, 36 out in 25 seconds. I usually go for 35 on the sete. One click finer on here, and you're you're choking the machine, no bueno. That's the other downside, this this, uh, this grinder's not stepless. But hey, the fact that it even has steps to go fine enough to produce, I mean, it's not, it's not terrible espresso, it's espresso. Yeah, but let's be real here, you got a freaking coffee grinder smaller than an SM57 that you can just throw in your gig bag that can grind court and find enough for espresso. What more do you want from me, for a hundred bucks? Go and get yourself one. You like coffee, you like music, buy one. Thank you. So there you have it. Everything I keep in my gig bag. Let me know if there's anything I missed or any things that you guys uh, put in that I don't. Yeah, and don't forget to give this video a like and let me know uh, down in the comments what other kind of videos you want to see me make talking about kind of everything and everything about bass, music, and kind of just teaching a lot of the lessons that I've learned along the way. Cheers. That's where I keep, you know, I got a suitcase. I keep all my cables, clothes, booze, other recently legalized substances in Canada.